Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for the session today. I'm your host, Mala Gupta. And today I'm pleased to welcome Shirisha Pratha, Senior, Spe Senior Specialist Developer sorry, at BNY Mellon and co-leader of Pittsburgh Java User Group. Shirisha will talk about how you can make IntelliJ IDEA your own by customizing it. She'll talk about why you would need to customize IntelliJ IDEA, what customizations are available, and also how to go about it. Of course, that would be incomplete without the demonstrations. And now, let me share a quick fun fact about Shirisha. She loves to play board games with her husband. Oh, Shirisha, that's so sweet. So welcome, Shirisha. It's a pleasure to have you present here today. Thank you so much, Mala, for inviting me and being part of these live stream sessions. Thank you. And before I let Shirisha take the stage, let me share some quick housekeeping details with you. Please use the YouTube chat to post your questions. I and Yuri from JetBrains will answer your questions as you post them. Shirisha would answer the questions towards the end of a session. And the session will be recorded and hosted to IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do that now. And last but not the least, if you like today's session, please do not miss to like this video. Like it said downstairs, down someday. So you can figure that out. Now, Shirisha, I'll let you take the stage now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mala. And uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning into the session. Today, we are going to be talking about how you can make IntelliJ IDEA your own. Uh, but before we get into the session, I want to start off by asking you all this question. And I know you can't really respond back to me real time, but that's fine. It's just to set the context of what we are really doing here in this session and what we'll be aiming to learn uh, in the next one hour. So the question here is, um, have you ever searched for the words, how to stay productive as a software developer? Or since we are here in the live stream, uh, JetBrains live stream session, have you ever looked up a resource uh, or a blog post even for the top 10 must have plugins for your IDE or top 10 productivity boosting plugins for your IDE. I've done, I've done all of these things. And if you're someone like me who said yes or raised your hand, uh, then this session is definitely for you. And in this session will be focused primarily at how you can create these plugins and how it can become your must have plugin for your IDE. With that, let me jump into the agenda. We'll be talking about why you want to customize your IDE, what's in it for you, what customizations are possible, the different types of plugins that the IntelliJ platform supports. And I also have demos, of course. And at this point, we'll talk about how you can create your first plugin and we'll wrap it up with um, a few key takeaways from the session. Let us jump into the first section, why customize your IDE. Now we see customizations all around us, whether it is with our movie streaming services, whether it is with our e-commerce websites, we see them everywhere around us. Or it could be us as users of a product customizing our tools or products, right? And why do we do this? We do this because it increases our sense of ownership. It might increase our productivity more often than not. That's usually the case. Or we want something to be ergonomically more efficient for us. Now, zooming in just for uh, the software developers and software uh, developers lifestyle, we rely very heavily on our tools. And the one such tool that I'm talking about here is our IntelliJ IDE. Now, we do this because it helps us speed up our software development process. We do this because it can help us stay focused on the business problem that we are solving and not have to worry about a million things like with your syntax, with your code formatting, I mean, it even helps us with identifying code smells. It helps us with refactoring. Now, using the right tool for the job is good. It's a great start if you're already using IntelliJ IDE. But knowing how you can use it to its full potential so you can actually maximize what you get out of your IDE is equally important. Now, I have this tweet here as an example of a feature that I learned just a few days ago. And I'm always amazed at what, your, what you can do with your IntelliJ IDE. And what if I told you that the magic doesn't stop here and you can actually take this one step further and actually extend your ID, add new features to your ID and tools uh, that meet your specific needs or even for your companies. You're basically creating these customizations uh, for you or for your organization. 
And we'll talk just about that in this next section, a uh, couple of plugin ideas uh, for uh, and, and creating these personalized experiences for you or for your company. Now, before I do that, I do have to paint a picture and hopefully you can all resonate with uh, what I'm about to say. Now, we do spend quite a bit of our time in our IDE, at least the time that we are coding. And the time that we are not in our IDE, we are on our browsers, um, either we are looking up information on a framework that we are working on, or we are looking up Stack Overflow issues, or we are interacting with third-party tools, whether it is your project management tools, internal project management tools, ticket tracking systems, Jira, U-Track, whatnot, or CI/CD frameworks, you know, Jenkins, Team City. Um, and, and every time we leave our IDE, it's a point of distraction. Um, you would have switched your context, you would have lost your train of thought. And when you come back to your IDE, you're sitting there wondering, what was what were you even doing in the first place? Now, these are all areas or opportunities for having plugin or having a plugin or even plugins for that matter. Um, also, another scenario to consider is if you're working with frameworks or libraries that are internal to you or to your company, then you will not find a, an, a ready-to-use plugin in the open source or the JetBrains marketplace. So you would have to invest the time and effort into building these plugins, uh, building these plugins not just for you, uh, but it will also benefit your entire company if you actually end up sharing them. Now, in this next section, we'll see how the IntelliJ platform actually enables us to do that. A fun fact about IntelliJ ID, uh, which is uh, somewhat of a realization for me back when I was creating uh, these plugins, is our IntelliJ IDE is actually made up of many, many plugins. Um, and what that means is if you have your ID in, open in front of you, you're already looking at a lot of these plugins. For example, you have the Gradle tool window plugin right here. Uh, you also have several uh, tool window plugins right here at the bottom. There's the Git integration right here. Um, and also any of these pop-up um, menu options that you see here on the top or the editor pop-up menu options that you see are all examples of existing plugins. And I haven't even touched upon inspections. Uh, code styles are also, again, examples of uh, plugins, inspections, themes, you get the idea. And how, how is it all possible? IntelliJ platform makes it uh, possible for us to uh, write these plugins. In fact, it, it was IntelliJ platform that was used to build this entire IDE. Uh, a big advantage of using IntelliJ platform uh, to create these plugins is that you can actually leverage the existing infrastructure. So whether it is their user interface toolkit, so you can create tool windows, pop-up menus, dialogues, tables, trees, or any of their uh, custom swing components, or you can also use their program structure interface and you get a bunch of um, features around file type recognitions, code completion, inspections, quick fixes, um, and, and many more and many more features like this. Um, if you know Java or if you know any of the JVM languages, you can write a plugin and we'll see just how you can do that in a, in a later section. Uh, but before we jump into how you can uh, actually create these plugins, let's look at the different types of plugins that are already supported by the IntelliJ platform. Now, knowing these type of plugins can actually show you the possibilities of the different things that you can build or uh, create with, within your IDE. So for the first one, uh, the different types of plugins is tool integration type of plugin. Now with this plugin, you can integrate with third party tools. You can use and manipulate that data uh, right from within your IDE. So Narlent is a great example of that. Uh, for the second one, you have user interface add-ons. Now in this, you can visually modify the UI of your IDE. So you can make changes to the UI of the IDE, uh, maybe add a new action here in the pop-up menu or to your editor pop-up menu. All of these are examples of user interface add-ons. And then you have uh, the custom language support plugin. Now, this is perhaps the, or perhaps like the most powerful type of plugin that you can write. In this, you can actually add additional inspections, code completion, syntax highlighting, for a given uh, programming language. Uh, if you wanted to do this for Java, uh, for a library that you're working on, you can provide all these things uh, using the custom language support type of plugin. 
And then you have the framework integration, which if you, you probably are getting the hang of this now. And here you can uh, write framework specific functionality and bring that to your IDE. Uh, Spring and Docker are good examples of that, of framework integration type of plugin. Also UI themes, I don't have to uh, talk a lot about this. I think everyone has picked their favorite already, but if you wanted to write a new UI theme, you can do so very easily using the IntelliJ platform. Um, now let's talk about, uh, uh, let's jump into some demos. Also, another quick thing to note here is knowing that these type of plugins exist, It's it makes it so much easier for you to look them up on the JetBrains marketplace using these tags and actually being inspired from other plugins that are already out there and being able to create those for yourself. Now, let's jump into some demos. I have three plugin demos to show you, uh, one for tool integration, one for user interface add-ons, and one for custom language support. Uh, for the first one, the third party tool uh, that I wanted to integrate with my IDE is Stack Overflow. I already have my plugin installed and we'll see towards the end of the session how you can install the plugin and how you can package it when you're creating your first plugin. Uh, so I have it already installed, and you can see here right at the bottom, the Stack Overflow tool window plugin. Uh, as soon as I click on it, you can see that it has come up uh, right here at the bottom of my IDE. I do have a couple of search fields. You can search by tags, you can search by title, and I also have some actions over here. You can get all the Stack Overflow issues that match the search criteria, and you can also clear the inputs and results. Um, I also have a table right here at the bottom, which is where you'll end up seeing the results shortly. So let's start with the demo. I'm going to say IntelliJ IDEA and go to Java 11. And I'm going to execute that search query and you can see that the results are uh, available to us here at the bottom. You have, you have some title information, some tags, and I also have a link right here which when I click on it, will open it up in a browser. It opened it up in the other window, so I had to move it here. But you can see that it opens it up in a browser. Um, I also have some other information right here, but um, the focus of uh, this demo is to talk about how uh, I was able to use, I want to bring your attention to how I was able to leverage the JetBrains or the IntelliJ platform infrastructure. Because I registered this as a or created this as a tool window type of uh, plugin, uh, IntelliJ platform provides some basic controls uh, for tool window. For example, right here, you can see the gear icon and you can see all these window options and also the minimize icon, which you will see in other places as well. For example, right here or uh, right here. Going back to the Stack Overflow demo, you can also see that I'm using couple of uh, familiar search field boxes. It may seem familiar to you because I do have it in, uh, it does appear elsewhere in your IDE. For example, here in your settings, you see that I've used the same search field box um, as you see in my demo. And then because I'm using this custom JetBrains Swing component from the IntelliJ Platform SDK, I don't have to write any additional code for uh, retaining the history or even for clearing the input right here. Uh, I can, all of this is coming out of the box, uh, just from the SDK. You can also see that I have used a couple of uh, familiar icons. For example, right here is the execute icon that everyone knows. It's the, the run program icon. And I also have this icon right here, which is the reload all from disk. Again, all of these icons are part of the IntelliJ Platform SDK. I didn't have to do anything special for it except for lay them out a certain way, lay all these components a certain way. Now, <clears throat> you can see here this table is also a custom uh, JetBrain Swing component. And one cool feature that I want to show you is if I change the theme of my IntelliJ, let's say right here. Just giving it a second. Yeah, you can see that the plugin automatically adapts to the theme that it is in. Uh, I didn't have to do any handholding or any additional logic to do this. It's uh, happening behind the scenes, um, behind the scenes because I'm using these components. They change uh, the color and font and whatever else to match the IDE's theme. So I'm gonna go back and change it to what I had originally. There you go. 
and I can click on this and it will clear all the inputs and results. Um, so that really concludes my uh, the first uh, uh, demo for tool integration plugin. For the second one, I'm going to switch over to a different project, uh, Eclipse Collections Cutter. And the plugin that I wrote was uh, is a type of user interface add-on. Now, my goal was to add a new menu option, uh, a new option right here in the editor pop-up menu. And I also wanted to look up code snippets on GitHub. Uh, now, my plugin is smart enough uh, or intelligent enough to only show me that option when I have text selected. See, if you, ca you can't see that option when I don't have any text selected, but now I can configure my plugin such that it only shows up when uh, that context menu is available. And I have the text selected. I can search GitHub. Again, it opens it up here. I'm going to bring it up. And you can see all the results right here. This is exactly what I wanted. You can do more with this plugin. You can use additional IntelliJ platform SDK APIs to also determine the programming language and filter that as part of the results here and send that as a query parameter to this GitHub search, which is something that I intentionally left out of the demo. But that is something that you can uh, check out this project and add it as a add it as an exercise. In this case, the programming language would be Java, of course. And then for the third type of plugin, it's a custom language support plugin. And in fact, that's how this entire talk came about. Uh, what I wanted to do here was uh, simplify some of these streams APIs into and convert them into Eclipse Collections APIs. Now, for those who do not know what Eclipse Collections is, it's an open source Java collections library. And I am a committer on that project. And I was looking to uh, create these inspections to convert or to simplify some of these streams APIs uh, into the, their equivalent equi uh, Eclipse Collections APIs. Now, you can see that right here, my plugin is already installed. And you can see the, the portion, uh, a, a couple of pieces, uh, a couple of lines already highlighted as a warning because my ins my inspection is already uh, ready to go. And you can see that when I hover on it, it shows me, uh, hold on. yeah, right here. It says you can use filter and find first, can be replaced with detect from Eclipse collections. And you can also read more about that uh, right here when you do the inspection description. And I have like some additional information about how, what pattern are we looking for? What pattern will it convert it to? And you can read more about this API right here. And at this point, this is like, I also have a quick fix um, as part of my plugin. And you can, this is like any other inspection at this point, you can Alt Enter and say, use Detect and Eclipse Collections. Or you could also do the same uh, by clicking on this icon and do use Detect from Eclipse Collections. Now, that concludes my last demo uh, for custom language support plugin. At this point, uh, I I'm going to switch back to my demo, uh, uh, switch back to my uh, project, and I'm going to talk about how you can create your first plugin. Just one second. Yeah. How you can create your first plugin. Now, there are a couple of moving parts. Uh, that go into how you can create your first plugin. When you're building your first plugin, I will be going over these uh, different things that you need to add or uh, you know set up. So you get a feel for how this plugin is actually developed. So the first thing uh, is how do you create a new plugin project? For this, I just use the new project wizard. So I have it already here, new project. And I'm going to select Gradle. You need Gradle for this, and there is information about uh, the Gradle and why Gradle in JetBrains documentation website. I have a link for it in the resource section. We'll come to that in, uh, in, a, in a later section. You select the project SDK. You select the programming language. I have Java right here, but you can also select uh, Kotlin if you wanted to. And I'm going to select IntelliJ Platform Plugin. Now, what this plugin does is uh, it actually adds all the configuration files that are needed for your plugin. And it reduces the number of things that you'll have to do later or add like the, you know, it'll reduce the number of files you'll have to add manually at a later point. So that's your IntelliJ platform plugin. You do this next and you give it some name, uh, demo May 19th. And at this point you give it uh, uh, 
some art, the, the artifact coordinates, which you would do for any other project. So you have the group ID, you have artifact ID, you have version, and you hit uh, finish. And it's created an empty project for me. I'm just going to give it a second for it to set up Gradle. Right. So you can see that it has created this project for me. And I, I right off the bat, you can see that it has already setting up Gradle. It has already created some Gradle files um, and also a source main resources project structure. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, the Gradle setup steps itself because that's uh, pretty much the same for any other Gradle project. But I'm only going to call out or focus um, on the IntelliJ specific parts of the uh, the setup. So for the first one, you have a build.gradle file. Let's start with that file. You have a section for plugins right here. Uh, I've got ID as Java. If you chose Kotlin, this will be Kotlin. Uh, but more importantly, you need um, the Gradle IntelliJ plugin. And this is the latest version, 0 0.7.3. I think it was released earlier this month, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what this Gradle IntelliJ plugin does is that it actually helps you uh, build your plugin, test your plugin, and not only that, it actually helps you publish your plugin to JetBrains repository. And you'll find all these tasks in the Gradle tool window right here. And if you go to tasks, it is going to be under the group called IntelliJ. And if you open that, you can see that there is a section for build plugin, uh, which allows you to build the plugin and also package uh, your plugin. You have run IDE. Uh, we'll look into how this task works in just a second. And then publish plugin, like I said, it'll actually help you publish it to the JetBrains uh, marketplace. I'm going to minimize this. The next section is IntelliJ. Now, is this is where you actually specify the version of IntelliJ you're going to be using to build your plugin. And the next section right here at the bottom is patch plugin XML. This is where you'll see all the information about change notes, release notes, whatever you want to call it. All of that information is going to go in here. And we'll see in just a second how all of this information actually comes together when you have your plugin installed. And for the next file, which is the plugin.xml uh, file, this is um, considered to be the entry point for your plugin. This is the most important plugin, uh, sorry, the most important file for your uh, plugin. I'm going to jump over to uh, my plugins demo project because it's uh, I've got all this information filled out already. So I've got plugins.xml file. We'll start with tool integration plugin. And you can see that um, you can see that this uh, has two sections. Uh, the plugin.xml file is where you describe the what of your plugin and also how your plugin is going to function. So for what of a plugin, you have the name, you have an ID, you have some vendor information, and also a description of what your plugin is going to do. I'm going to pause here and show you all how it looks when you have your plugins, if you, when you have your plugin installed. And hopefully you can all still see this. Um, I'm going to select Stack Overflow demo. And I'm going to just minimize this a bit more. OK, cool. You can see that the name is the same as uh, what you have here. Vendor information is right here. And the description is what you have, uh, what I have here. Like search is Stack Overflow issues and questions. Line number seven is what you see here. And change notes, if you remember from my previous section, uh, this is uh, this is coming from uh, the build.gradle file. And you can see all the change notes right here. If I showed you something like sonar lint, uh, this is their description, and this is their change notes. Now, going back to our file, uh, to our plugin.xml file, for the next three sections uh, is going to describe how your plugin is going to work. So the first section is depends. Um, all plugins need to depend on the platform modules. Uh, but let's say you're creating a custom language support plugin, and you're uh, adding new inspections like I did with the custom language support plugin that I just showed you uh, for programming language Java, then you'll depend on the module Java. And what this really means is what by doing this, what you get is you get to use the underlying APIs and the shared functionality that this module has to offer. And you can see um, many more such modules that were that are available. 
and what functionality they offer right here on the JetBrains doc documentation. And I've got this as a link in the resource, which I will share shortly. And you can see all of these modules right here. Based on the use case of your plugin, the modules that you depend on will change. Now for the next two sections, you have extensions and actions. Both of these are ways in which you can actually extend your IDE uh, and add new features. So for extensions, uh, this is the tool integration plugin. Uh, for tool integration plugin, the, the extension point that you will be using is tool window. And uh, depending again on the use case of your plugin, the extension point will change. So for I've got the tool window plugin, and this is my there isn't there's a class each each extension or an action will have an implementation class. So for this one, you'll see that I have implemented tool window factory, and this this will change for the either the extension point or the action that you have. So it also has some ID and an anchor attribute. So I have it at the bottom. So that means your stack your tool window will appear here at the bottom. You can also change this to right or left. And um, and the and the plugin will appear. Uh, the tool window will appear um, either to the right or to the left of your IDE based on what you have here. For a different type of uh, plugin, let, let's say for my custom language support uh, plugin, I'm going to say for my custom language support plugin, you can see that I have a different uh, extension, uh, local inspection. This too has an implementation class. And in this case, when you click on it, you can see that it actually extends from the Java local inspection tool. Uh, in the other case, you saw it was implementing the tool window factory. Like I said, depending on the extension point, uh, you, you, your, starting, uh, your starting point will differ. Going back to this particular inspection, there are a couple of attributes here as well. So you have language Java, you have a display name, and um, I have it enabled by default, uh, or otherwise it, it'll show up as an option for you to select in your inspections from your settings and inspections if this isn't set up to true. And for level, I have it as warning, but you could change this to error or info, depending on what you're uh, trying to do with your uh, inspection. So for this next section, um, what I have is uh, the user interface uh, demo. So let's look at that or the interface demo right here. So for this, I don't have any extensions, but I'm not extending from an existing extension point, but what I'm doing is I'm actually registering a new action. So this is, like I said earlier, is another way to extend your ID and add like new actions. And in this case, if you remember from the demo, um, I was adding a new editor pop-up menu option right here. And you'll see uh, when we break down this action, you can see how it uh, all comes together. So for example, I have a uh, action, action has an ID. Uh, it, this too has a class, again, the starting point. So you click on this and in this case, I'm extending uh, from dumb aware action or it can also extend from an action. Uh, going back, it also has some text. This is the same text that you will see uh, when you right click and or uh, wherever you see this action pop up, you'll see the text matching what you have here. You also have some long description. An icon. Um, as I mentioned earlier, both in Stack Overflow demo and for this demo, uh, I'm using icons that appear elsewhere in your IDE. So for example, here you can see it's the same icon that I'm using for uh, the editor pop-up menu. Uh, again, this is part of the IntelliJ Platform SDK. You're not really writing, uh, you're not really creating these icons. Uh, for this next line, line 23, I'm adding it to an existing group, so the editor pop-up menu in this case. But you can also create new groups and bundle them and show them. You know, you can bring them to your IDE uh, by by creating new groups as well. And then I also have some other attributes. Uh, for example, I'm saying uh, my I want my action to appear after the search web option. So right here, you can see it's search with Google is the search web option, and I'm saying that I want this option to appear right after uh, this particular option. So that's the action. That's how you register an action. And you can do this simply in um, in three files. So you just need the plugin.xml file. You need the build.gradle file. And you need a class that does this. So let's open this up and see what this uh, class is really doing. I am, I am implementing this uh, action performed method. 
the first three lines of this uh, method, which is line 17, 18, and 19, is how I'm getting the selected text. Now, this is an API, um, uh, the get required data from common data keys. I'm using this API to get uh, the selected text. But you can also uh, use other common data, other data keys that are available to us. For example, you can see uh, the language data keys and also get uh, the programming language of interest. In this case, it would have been Java. As I mentioned, you can also use that and get the language information and pass that as a GitHub search query, as a query parameter. So you have the GitHub search query right here. And at the end, I'm using browser util, which is another utility from IntelliJ platform SDK. And I'm opening that link in, in the default browser. Uh, again, uh, this makes it so much easier. And they have a lot of these uh, handy utilities uh, across the IntelliJ platform SDK. And I'm using the same logic. Uh, for the update method, I'm selecting the text, but I'm saying if it is empty, do not show it. Do not show me the option. So that's how the context menu and um, that's how you configure your plugin to only show up where uh, if you need it. So if it meets a certain condition. In this case, I'm saying if the selected test text is not empty, if the selected text is empty, do not show me the plugin or the action. Um, so that's with how you can create the plugin. Uh, it, like I said earlier, the things it may seem a bit complicated. It may seem a bit overwhelming in the beginning when you're uh, first writing out your plugins. But as you uh, write more of these, and in due time, it will get easier. Also, I think you'll probably appreciate. Uh, I, I think more importantly, you'll appreciate having these plugins in your ID, these plugins that you created, and getting to use them every single day. Uh, for the next section, um, let's jump back to, uh, I've covered most of these things. Uh, the two other things that I want to show is the one other feature that I have been using very recently uh, is the UI inspector. Uh, and this one can help you find uh, new components and new actions quite easily. So it's a feature called UI inspector. You'll find this under tools, internet, internal actions, and UI inspector. I already have it on. So I'm going to turn it off and on again because you can see what happens. So the UI inspector, uh, you can control alt click to view component information. So the way I use this is let's say you wanted to reuse or use this particular uh, JetBrains component, the Swing component in your plugin. Then what I do is I control alt and click on that component and you can see the underlying uh, swing component right here. So for example, this is search text field, uh, which is exactly what I'm using in, uh, in my Stack Overflow plugin demo. And you can do this for pretty much anything. You can do this to find new icons if you want. If you want to use, let's say this icon in your plugin, then you can control click that and it'll show you uh, the icon information what that icon is, um, uh, the name of the icon. And you can do the same for uh, even discovering new actions. Like let's say you have this and you want to see what this particular action does. You can click on it and you can also see, uh, drill down further and access this class. So for, for example, this is generate action and you can see what this action really is. If you want to do something similar, you have a starting point to uh, learn from. I have I found uh, UI Inspector to be very, very handy and useful uh, when I'm writing new plugins and I want to uh, create these plugins that have like the same look and feel as the rest of your IDE. So a couple of uh, more things, uh, I, I guess like two other things that I want to talk about is the run IDE task and build plugin. Uh, so right here, I have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you have a custom, you have your uh, Gradle tasks for IntelliJ. You have the build plugin. You also have the run IDE plugin. So what build, build plugin does is that it actually creates um, a folder called build right under your project, uh, your plugin demo project or plugin project. And then under distributions, you can see that it creates this uh, zip file. Uh, it bundles all the plugin that is actually uh, that can easily be installed. So you go to uh, settings, 
at this point, go to plugins and install plugin from desk. If you're not publishing your plugin to your um, to to JetBrains repository, but you want to locally test it out uh, by installing it, you can do so by install plugin from desk. So you get to see how your plugin looks uh, when it is actually installed, like all of this information. So that is pretty easy. So that's what the build plugin task does. And for the next one, which is your uh, run IDE task, uh, the run IDE task, what this does is it actually opens up a new IntelliJ IDE uh, with the version that you're using to build the plugin. And it actually installs the plugin for you. So you get to see how it will look like as if it's in production. So let me, I'm running the custom language support plugin. So I'm going to change something about it. So you get to see how this looks. I'm going to change this to error. Oh, wow. Error, of course. And I'm going to say run ID. You can see all of these tasks that it's running. And they should also open up. It open it up on the other window. I'll uh, bring it to this window in just a second. Oh, perfect. When you run this task for the first time, uh, you would have to open a project and it will remember the context of it. So the next time you run this this exact same task, it actually opens up your IDE and it remembers what was the last project that it opened. So in this case, I had it already testing with Eclipse Collections Cutter project. So it actually opened all of this and has it already uh, ready for me. But if you remember from my demo, uh, this section was highlighted uh, as a warning. But since I changed my uh, inspection to now say error, you can see that it has that red dotted line at the bottom. And at this point, uh, and this is my test container. This is not my original IDE right here. It is my original IDE. This is uh, the place where I'm actually testing my IDE. Another way to know this is you'll see that there are no other plugins. Uh, this is just the plain IntelliJ ID as it came, as it came when it was installed first. Um, at this point, you can do the same thing. I'll enter, use detect and Eclipse collections. And you can basically test this out um, many times and see how the plugin actually will behave in a, in a real IDE. So this task is um, very, very helpful. Uh, and you can also, uh, of course, there's also the publish plugin uh, task, which I'm not very familiar with. I haven't uh, published any any uh, plugins to the JetBrains marketplace, uh, but there is a lot of documentation around this uh, in the JetBrains website, and many people have already done this, so it isn't um, something new. Uh, for the last, I do want to cover a few more things. Uh, let's go back to... I want to go back to my plugin. I have covered all of these things. And then the next section is uh, key takeaways. I do, uh, I was planning for like a 45 minutes uh, session. So I think I'm right about, uh, right on time. So for key uh, takeaways for this session, I think we all understand that plugins save time and they increase our productivity. Uh, I have myself like Googled for resources on uh, top 10 must have plugins, top 10 productivity plugins. But uh, the point of this uh, session is that you can create these plugins uh, quite easily and bring in these contexts of these tools and all these interactions that are happening outside of your IDE and bring them to your IntelliJ, to your workspace where you are actually spending most of your time. Uh, if you know Java, then you can build these plugins. Uh, plugins are uh, think of plugins as small, lightweight applications that live in your IDE container. Plugin development is no different than uh, any other software that you would develop or any other applications that you would develop. It's the same uh, software development process. You uh, write Java code or Kotlin, and then you test them out. Again, you have all these uh, fantastic Gradle tasks that will help you create, uh, test out all these uh, plugins in an IntelliJ or a production-like environment. And um, the, the third point is context is queen. Um, I absolutely love this quote by Trisha G. Uh, she mentioned this in one of the JetBrains conferences for, uh, I think it was the session for code flow. I, I love this quote because 
being able to teach your IDE new context of what you're doing um, and being able to bring it to uh, the place where you're working uh, most of the time is a game changer. It, it's extremely powerful. And uh, the IntelliJ platform allows you to do this, enables you to do this. Uh, if you're still thinking about places where um, how you want to get started with uh, of the plugin development, then uh, then then my recommendation would be to identify common development workflows, uh, places where you're interacting with uh, whether it's with your third party tools or whether it is with libraries or frameworks that you're working with. Identify some of these common patterns and uh, right click small plugins and then you can always build on top of it. Uh, that's how I started out uh, when I uh, created my first plugin. Start simple. Start with something as simple as like just searching with uh, searching as a searching GitHub action. This is uh, the easiest way that you can do, and using these uh, using this as a starting point uh, will cut down or like maybe increase uh, speed up your plugin development process. Um, and then I do have a section for resources. Uh, I just want to quickly jump into the resources section. I'm going to minimize all of this so you can see what's happening. Yeah, for uh, resources, I've, I've used all of these resources when I was first building my plugin. Uh, I've covered most of them. We've talked about different types of plugins. We talked about um, uh, how, how you can do the plugin configuration files. You have the actions, extensions, and also the gr Gradle IntelliJ plugin tasks. I do want to point out one other resource, which is the IntelliJ platform plugin template. Now, I haven't used this plugin template, but this can also be used instead of using the IntelliJ platform plugin from New Project Wizard. You can use this as a starting point, and this should help you uh, create all the necessary configuration files that your plugin needs. And this also creates uh, readme files and also plugin.xml files and all that stuff as well. I haven't used this, but uh, this was something that was, I think, recently introduced. Um, it's a template for uh, creating plugins for IntelliJ platform. Uh, this is, again, a link that you can use. Um, also, I've talked about UI Inspector. One other thing is they also have a section for UI guidelines. Now, th in this link here, you can find information about what are some of the best practices uh, if you're not a UI developer, as I'm not, I'm, I, I don't uh, normally do any UI development. Uh, so this UI guidelines uh, link actually helped me sort of understand what are some of the best practices uh, around how you can lay out some of these components, when, when to use a certain component and when not to use a certain uh, uh, swing component. I think this link is uh, very helpful for that. And then you have the extensions explorer. Um, again, this is um, a place if you're looking to develop a plugin or if you're looking to extend from an existing plugin, then using this link, you can uh, find existing extension points and uh, use that as your uh, use that as your starting point in your uh, plugin.xml file. It is hard. Uh, to find all all uh, extensions in one place. So I think having this list is uh, really, really helpful. Cool. Um, I I can I, I think we can stop here, Mala, and then we can see if there are any questions. Uh, I forgot to send you the link of my GitHub repository. Oh, I, is it me or I can't hear you, Mala? I think you're on mute. It happens Sorry. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so thank you so much, Shurisha. It was a great session. And I really like the Stack Overflow tool window because uh, as developers, we know that uh, talking about something and having uh, watched a demonstration, it is kind of a game changer. And I really hope that everyone who attended, they found more reasons and ways to make IntelliJ IDEA work better for them, their projects, and the organizations. So Yuri has been uh, um, answering all the questions, so we really don't have any questions for you. Um, the only one was there were multiple questions about uh, the link to the GitHub repo for all the demonstrations that you had, which you already mentioned that you would yeah. share with us later. So everyone who's watching, we would share this probably in a day or two when we post the summary. Yeah. Uh, now, this brings 
us me to the first question which i would like to ask you okay. is how did you make intellij idea your own and tell us about the first customization okay um in fact it it is uh, somewhat similar to uh, the stack overflow tool window this is uh, this is what so my cust i guess like it was a type of tool integration plugin um that i wrote it was for a for integrating with a ticket tracking system and i use it every single day i use it um, quite often to either to look up links like i did right here in the stack overflow tool window or it could be for uh, just like getting quick information right from your ide so you're not really going into a browser and just finding like some pieces of information that you don't really need to be in a browser for you can just find this information right here in your ide and copy paste you know start start coding and that was that was my first uh, type of plugin in fact the reason i even brought up the different types of plugins that the intellij id framework actually supports is i for the longest time thought tool integration plugin was the only thing that you could do <laughs> like that that or even the user interface add-ons and then as i was reading more about it i realized that hey there is also custom language support plugin i didn't know that you could write your own inspections and given that i was a i was a committer on eclipse collections i realized that hey let me do something about this let me convert some of these eclipse collection streams apis into eclipse collections apis and i started to play with it and there you go i have a plugin in the making um so so yeah just really even knowing uh that first that this is possible that you can actually do this and second to know the different types of plugins that it supports is i think uh, ho hopefully can inspire a few of you to write a plugin or if you saw like common places like this this need not be stack overflow this can be your ticket tracking system this can be your ci cd framework this can be anything that you want it to be all that it needs is like a rest call you basically need to um, write write that one uh, service that can integrate with that third party tool and the rest of it is um, a lot of the heavy lifting is actually done by the intellij platform sdk that was a long answer but that yeah. <laughs> that was my point no no absolutely i i agree with uh, all that you said because uh, what i really think is that customizing intellij idea it would be kind of it would apply differently to every developer right. they would need to know what they need and if that's possible and if possible how do they go about it right. so every every developer would have their own stories and this is what uh, the ability to kind of uh, do that is what makes it interesting and the other one uh, which i think would be important to all the developers out there is about the testing of the plugins so are there uh, are there any do's and don'ts or anything that you learned the hard way when you were testing your plugins um definitely uh, that's a great question mala uh, so in my opinion the best way to do this and uh, uh, the gradle intellij plugin makes it so much easier to do this is being able to run this in uh, ide and actually get the full feel for how your plugin is going to look uh, right like in your like i said in your production like environment i think that's probably the best way to fully test out your plugin and actually uh, play with the different things that can happen and how it even looks in under different themes you can see all of that when you run it in your ide uh but there are uh, there is actually quite a lot of documentation on uh, just as how we have all these components and infrastructure that we get from the intellij platform you also get text fixtures uh, so you can write lightweight and um, you know uh, lightweight tests just using the the platform itself like the intellij platform sdk and the apis uh, so that's definitely something that you can do uh, that's more like unit testing uh, but if you wanted to do full fledged uh, functional testing you don't have to uh really deploy this anywhere you can do this right from within your ide uh just like from your desktop testing sort of a thing so so uh, thank you so much rishi that was um, I, i love the session so if you have uh, any um, yes of course thanks everyone for attending the session and for asking the questions of course yuri for answering all the questions um any closing remarks from you rishi um not really as in more than like <laughs> take away i hope like uh, people actually realize that this is possible and that they can actually do this i do want to share my uh, repository link with you right now uh, so let me add your yeah. yes so you uh, can actually send yes. it to uh, 
Uh, do you want to share your screen? I, I just I added your screen you as a chat. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's okay. possible too. I can do that. I do have quite a few links that are open because it opened it up in okay, multiple so links. Well. But there you go. It is under yeah. Prada Sirisha and it's IntelliJ yeah. plugins demo. And I have the demos and also the 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 slides or whatever you want to call it, the mm -hmm. ASCII doc files as well. Uh, if people are still on, you can share it on the YouTube uh, chat itself. Yeah, so the session is being recorded, so they would already see uh, this now. And if Perfect. they want to kind of watch it later, they would see uh, every, everything that you are showing to them Perfect. now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mala, mm -hmm. for having me and inviting me to the session. Um, hopefully, there are a few folks who are already thinking about some of the plugins that they can write, uh, and not not only will it benefit you if you're working for a if you're working for an organization, it can actually help your entire developer community. I think that's a, that's a big win. Uh, so go, please write a plugin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks again, Cherisha, and this is for everyone who's who's watching. Uh, stay tuned for our next live streams. We already have two lined up uh, for you. On 28th May, we have one from Yuri from JetBrains, and he'll talk about the modern UI test automation with Selenium libraries. Uh, Yuri is a software developer with JetBrains, program committee member at JPoint and Joe Conferences, and also a microservices fellow. And on June 16th, we have Brian Vermeer, one of my favorite speakers. He's also a Java champion and dev advocate. Uh, with Sneak, and he'll help you to find and fix the security flaws in your Spring Boot applications, of course, using IntelliJ IDEA and Sneak. So, until next time, bye.